The Korg Wave Station is currently on sale for $50 USD. For those looking to add a bit of that 90s magic to their music production, this is one of the best VSTs you could buy, in my opinion. But with such power comes an incredibly confusing synth that is a bit difficult to wrap your head around. In this video, I'm going to show you the basics you need to get started quickly and be able to create your own atmospheric pads like you're hearing right now. Alright, so in the Korg Wave Station, it's important to first just talk about the architecture very briefly. And essentially what you have in the Wave Station is a permanent combination mode. So if you've used something like a Korg Triton, a Korg M1, there are two types of modes you can use program mode and combination mode. Combination mode, in the other sense, is essentially your ability to stack up up to eight different programs, a program being an individual preset. The wave station is essentially the same thing where in a performance, they call them, if I go to my browser here and I go to RAM 1, RAM 2, RAM 3, any of these sound banks here, there are 49 performances in each one. Think of a performance, is kind of essentially a preset. So if I open a performance here, this is what the performance looks like. And you'll see there are eight different parts in here. And in each part, you can slot in what is called a patch. A patch essentially being also a preset just a level down in the architecture. A little confusing, especially if you're used to more analog type synths. And then if we go a level deeper, there's all sorts of things you can do in here, like set up different key zones for each part. So based on what octave you're playing in your keyboard, the specific part may sound or may not sound. And then you see all sorts of other confusing things on here, like this little vector joystick, and you may have heard about wave sequencing as well. It's a very in-depth synth, but I'm gonna give you some tricks you can use to be able to create your own atmospheric pads without having to know all these little details in depth. So we're not gonna go super deep into things like wave sequencing or the vector joystick here. We're gonna keep it very simple. Again, the goal is to get you somewhat competent very quickly. So let's come back into the browser here and you can go into any of these RAMs here and just grab a random patch, double click on it. It's gonna take you into this view here and we're gonna see a part slotted in here. So if I play my keyboard, Now to change this part, I can basically click this list button here and this is gonna pull up the patch list. So in all the banks for the patches, I can come in and add a different patch. In pro tip, when you're looking at this patch list, if you click single click on any patch and hold the left mouse button, it'll actually audition that patch. That's a pretty nice sounding patch there. Very good atmospheric pad. Now, what I wanna look at over on the right here is for each part within the performance, I can control some basic things like the level of that part. All right, so this is at max volume here, 99. For this individual part, if I were to come in and add another part here, I can drop the level of that second part to make it a little more subtle. Let's find another example. Now I can also do some other basic things here like delay the start of an individual part. So from the time I hit my MIDI keyboard to the time that it will take for this specific part to sound. Very nice way to fade in uh, some different sounds within here and some other options in there. So we can do things like uh, send it to a specific effects bus here, all sorts of good things. But essentially what we're doing here is taking a very easy approach to building out these sounds where we're taking an existing performance and just slotting in different parts. So 
this first part here, and by the way, if I click this little sound icon, it will let me solo any of the parts. Let's grab this second part here, and I'm gonna solo that and find a different sound that may work nice with this. That a little ambient. Let's turn that up. All right, let's get a, another part in there. All right, I'm liking this. See how quickly we're just building up a really nice, rich, atmospheric sound here? Let's get something else. So let's actually hone in on this specific part here. I like the sound, the kind of vocal feel to it, but I don't like the attack. So if I wanted to actually edit this, I'd have to select the part I want to edit, go to patch, and now this takes me into the editor for the patch. Now on the patch level, there are different structures you can have. So you can have a four oscillator patch where there are four single or distinct oscillators within it. You can have one oscillator or two, right? So if we go back to performance here, imagine if you had eight different patches or parts in each one with four oscillators in it. That's insane. Like it just shows you the scope of what's possible and it's really still just scratching the surface here. But let's not get all mixed into that. Let's just do some basic edits here. And so what I wanna do is change the amp envelope for this patch here. I wanna fade it in a little more. So I'm gonna select the first oscillator, go to amp. I'm just gonna drag this attack out a little bit. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the second oscillator. And then I'm gonna add actually a little bit more release on both of these. A little more, maybe. Let's actually turn up the level of this specific oscillator. Right, so very easily, we have changed the feel of a specific patch just by modifying the envelope. Now, things are gonna get a little funky here because the architecture of the wave station when it comes to things like saving is very old school. Now, what you need to do is actually save the patch itself. And the way we do that is when we have the patch open, we go to write. And with our patches, we can only save them in RAM one, two, or three. If you do not save the patch like this, if you close wave station and come back later, the patch will not have the changes you made. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it to right here. I'm just gonna click okay. And so now that patch is saved into RAM one of the uh, patch banks. So I can come back to my performance here. Let's unsolo that and hear everything together. What I'm going to do is just drop the volume of some of these things here. Let's actually go into settings here and just for good measure, let's increase the voices within here. Now, same thing here. I actually really like this sound here, but I, I want things to fade in a little bit better. So I'm gonna go into this tambourine patch here. Also go into the amp envelope and try to fade it in. And then I want that sound to stay a little more present. It does kind of disappear very quickly. So we'll bring up some of the sustain here. 
and have a big release. And then I think in the bugs, I do want to delay the start of that. Let's just crank this up. And then I think actually if we go back into the bugs here, I do want to come into the amp envelope and have that fade out a little bit. I don't want so I don't want the sustain volume as loud. I kind of want it to poke its head through and then fade out a little more. So let's remember to write our patches here. And then we need to write this tambourine one that we modified as well. Let's turn down the volume of this again. Very nice, let's go into our effects here and we have two effects that we can slot in a performance. So, you know, each patch doesn't have its own distinct effects unit. The effects setup is contained within the performance. So all of your parts in here, you can choose if you wanna route them to the effects, do you wanna route them to A, B, a combination of the two, all sorts of interesting things you can do there. But for now, it looks like everything is routing into the effects here. Let's go ahead and switch effect two to some type of reverb here. And that's kind of how you do it, folks. And so that's a very easy way to you know, start dipping your toes into the wave station. We're essentially, again, just taking an existing performance and very simply just stacking up different parts, swapping out the different parts. If we want to do a very basic change on an existing part, I showed you how you can go into that part or patch, change something like the amp envelope, save the patch, and then you hear that change right away. So this is a great way, again, to get started. There is is infinite more depth you can get into. Don't want to bog you down with that today. Just get comfortable with some of these basics here. Now, the next thing we need to do as well is write the actual performance because if we close the wave station and then open it again, we will lose it. So what I'm going to do is come up to the top here and rename this to TF pad, something like that. Then we're going to go to write and you'll see for the performances, we can only write them to RAM 1 two or three. I'm going to go into RAM two here and save it on number 27. I can add some filters here, you know, that kind of describe the sound. So later when I go to browse for a performance, I can filter the performances by these different characteristics. Just a good way to stay organized when you're doing your patch browsing. We're going to click OK here and that will add it. If we go to browse here, go to RAM two, we can see that performance here. However, we're not done. There's one more thing we have to do. We gotta go to the top, go to file, save, and I would recommend doing save all RAMs here. And then what you'll do is actually save a .fxb file to your hard drive. Now that FXB file is gonna contain RAM one, two, and three as it exists at this moment in time, right? So when you come back into the wave station, if you want that FXB file to be the primary one, what you'll do is also go to file, save, make current all RAMs default. And what that means is that FXB file that you just saved will always be the default FXB file that is opened when you open the wave station. I know this is incredibly convoluted. You know, this is actually pretty much how the actual wave station hardware work. And I guess Korg just decided to replicate that in VST form. Anyways, folks, hope you found this video useful. This is just a very basic dip your toes in the water of the wave station, but with it being on sale for $49, I wanted to get this out so folks could see, you know, while it is complex, it is actually kind of easy to make some unique sounds out of here that sound insane like nothing else. Hope you all found the video useful. Have a good one.